and this sparked a storm of protest from the Linfield players and manager Roy Coyle, who wanted the referee to inspect the net. It was then that Coyle appeared to indicate that the game was over as far as Linfield was concerned, and he gestured to his players to leave the pitch. If Coyle was incensed by the decision, so too was Chairman Campbell, and he confirmed that Linfield will lodge a protest. Having seen the complete evidence this morning, uh, as I think it's well known, it's not uh, Linfield's policy to uh, protest, but I can tell you to answer your question, we will be lodging an official protest. Do you feel that the protest will work? Because I can never remember a game here, the result being reversed. I would feel if uh, authority would uh, perhaps look at the film, speak to all concerned, uh, one never knows, there's always a first time for, for everything. Linfield beat Glentoran on penalties and they'll meet Newry on the afternoon of November the 14th. Here are the highlights, starting with the finish. The unique victory wave of Lindsay McKeown signalled defeat for Glentoran by five goals to four in a penalty shootout. It brought to conclusion a match that contained much excitement for a crowd of around 7,000. And wouldn't you know it, just a minute before the whistle blew for half time, Linfield nipped upfield and scored. Burrows against the crossbar, and that man McGacky completed the unfinished business, his 18th goal of the season. The exhibition of sheer skill you're about to see from Jim Cleary may have briefly perked him up. A great goal indeed, and that equaliser came on the stroke of full time. But there was more excitement before the full time whistle. Linfield came so close to a winner. One each then after 120 minutes, and now the dreaded penalty kicks. Both teams scored four each, but Ray Morrison's kick was saved. Lindsay McKeown then stepped up for Linfield. It was Linfield's first trophy of the season and in some small way compensated for the decision by UEFA to prohibit the Blues from playing at home in their next two European matches. There were 17 minutes on the watch when Linfield took the lead. Sid Burrows picked up a good pass from Philip Nell and Martin McGacky finished it off in style. Yuri responded though and George Dunlop had to move pretty quickly in the Linfield goal to keep out Ollie Ralph. The final eight minutes of the first half were packed with incident and controversy. First, Stephen Baxter made it 2-0 for Linfield. Martin McGachy rounded off a Linfield attack for the Blues' third and his 21st goal of the season. And right on the stroke of half-time, Philip Nell went in too hard and too late on John Corvin. Nell, who'd had a fine game for Linfield up until then, was sent off by the referee Sidney Spence. And Terry Buchanan, who decided to exact his own retribution, was also given the red card. Put three goals past Glenavon at the weekend. Glenavon's best crowd for years, over 4,000, turned out to see their team's most important match of the season. Joined second on Saturday morning, neither side had lost in the last six matches. But ominously, Roy Coyle's men were hitting form around the new year. They did the same last season on their way to a sixth successive championship. Taken by man of the match, Billy Murray, Duncan McLeod beat the hesitant Robbie Beck. <laughs> Change of sport followed. McConville and Coyle practiced their jiu-jitsu. And then welterweight Davy Dennison threw his knockout punch. Coyle made the count. But the referee gave Dennison a public warning. A strong run from Sid Burrows led to Linfield's next goal. His curled effort was saved by Beck, but Murray was poaching. Linfield were two up, and Minto was in ecstasy. And adrenaline still coursing through his blue veins, Murray set up Linfield's third and Duncan McLeod's second with 18 minutes left. And that finished Glenavon off. Round replay, Portadown ended Linfield's hopes of taking this year's Irish Cup.
Two goals by little Greg Davidson and some brilliant saves by goalkeeper Mickey Keenan buried Linfield beneath the mud of Shamrock Park. And it was O'Neill who set up the first goal after 24 minutes with the cheekiest bit of football you're likely to see on any ground this year. A little Irish jig in the touchline through the legs of David Jeffrey and there's Davidson a left footer into the top corner of the net. And isn't he delighted? And so are the Portadown supporters. Into the second half. And Davidson does it again. With the left foot. 2-0 for Portadown. Little Greg Davidson is suddenly 10 feet tall. And Duncan McLeod gets the ball in. Back it comes to Philip Nail. And Keenan stops it. And Paul Miller gets it over the crossbar. Well, that was the end for Linfield. Portadown go through to the semi-final of the Irish Cup to play Glen Torren with that victory by two goals to nil. But the Glens are clear favourites. A draw tomorrow and another at Coleray next Saturday will be enough. But wouldn't they love to win the championship by beating Linfield? Possibly 10,000, which is uh, bigger than most cup finals would attract. Here's Pat McCoy. Dispossessed to McCloy, passed a fitness test this morning on a free kick. Given against John Devine and Raymond Morrison. For that tackle on Lee Doherty. Lee Doherty, number four for Linfield this afternoon, and number eight, Philip Nell, one of the new boys this season. Defensive wall being lined up by Pat McCoy. So it will be either now or Doherty. McGackey's at the far post. It's Doherty. And it's there. Patterson got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. And a dramatic start to this match with just over two minutes gone. Lee Doherty giving Linfield a lot of hope. And that's it. Lee Doherty, the man who gives Linfield what a lot of people will describe as a very unexpected win here at the Oval today but it is a win which they well deserved on today's, today's display you have to say, quite frankly, that Torren were not good enough to win Seven years is a long time to wait for a league title and the Glen Torren fans at the Coleraine showgrounds on Saturday experienced both delight and not a little relief as the championship title was won but at Windsor Park, Linfield, the champions for six successive seasons, weren't going to give up without a fight. And Martin McGackey, scoring his 40th goal of the season, put the Blues into the lead. Within two minutes, the pressure on Glen Torren was further increased. And once again, it was that man McGackey, already assured of a holiday anywhere in the world, courtesy of a loyal Linfield supporter. Sixty miles away, it was an anxious Glen Torren management team who, with half an hour of the game gone, were contemplating the prospect of the league title slipping away from them. But Jim Cleary's cross was met first by Caskey and then by John Devine, who beat Jim Platt. Five minutes after the restart, Cole Rain threw Linfield a lifeline when, after a goal noise scramble, Nigel Quigley equalised. While the crowd's attention was focused on an over-exuberant and slightly belligerent Glen Torren fan being escorted from the field, Raymond Morrison took everyone by surprise and restored the Glen Torren lead. The news of that goal momentarily stunned the home fans and the team at Windsor Park, and Ballymena United pulled one back when Michael Smith beat George Dunlop. But the irrepressible McGackey made sure of a Linfield victory, beating his brother Philip for the third time of the afternoon. But it was to be Glen Torren's day and Glen Torren's title, as their fans kept waiting until the last match of the season, shared their heroes off the